Right, we are live. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Kiwi Lads channel. We're back for some more United Rugby Champion action. Now, this is actually a couple Friday night games in South Africa due to, of course, Christmas being just around the corner, but a couple South African derbies. I feel like that's a pretty good Christmas present for any rugby fan. Looking through at the Sharks lineup, we will be reading them off. This is going to be the home side for this matchup. They will be as follows. Thomas De Toy, Daniel Yuster in the starting lineup, and then Carlos Sadie, a big front row and a powerful front row here. And I think that's something that the Sharks will look to try and assert their dominance early in, try and really get the Lions on the back foot. Vincent Tuchuka, he will be playing number four, which is interesting as we have seen him a lot more in the blindside flanker. Maybe number seven as well as somewhere he likes to occupy. So it will be a new challenge for him to start at number four here. That is rather than Eben Etzebeth who we saw in the Champions Cup. Hyder and Andrews at number five to close out that locking duo. Then it will be Nutshire at number six, Labaskakne at seven, and then the big man Pepsi Butalazi at number eight. Now, the problem that the Sharks have to an extent is they've got a lot of talented loose forwards, but they don't really know how to put them all into their side. Another one missing for this match, of course, would be Sia Khaleesi. So I believe a majority of the four-pack they have actually rested because also they haven't got themselves at number two. Bongi Umbanambi looking through at the back line. Grant Williams, nine. Kuwen Bosch at number 10. Makazoli Mapimpi, the try scoring machine, out on the left wing. Rohan Jansi van Zrensberg at number 10. Oh, sorry, at number 12. Lukanya Wam recently returned from his injury, looking sharp in his last couple of contests. Werner Kock out on the right wing. And Jutta Chamberlain slots in at number 15. So overall, a very strong sight for the Sharks in this match. Up against the Lions, looking through at the Lions. But first of all, we have got Vishal, Gareth, and also Bertie in the chat. How's it, Amish brother? Hope you are well. Here all call going Lions by five, says Bertie V. So I believe they would come in as underdogs for this match, but it could certainly be a close game. It normally is when we see a South African derby throughout of the URC. Looking through, JP Smith at number one, PJ Borta at two. And then the name that you cannot see, it's probably a good thing because it looks like it's quite a hard one to say. We're going to give this one a go. It is. Labakanye, I believe it is, at number three to close out the front row for the Lions. Alberts and Nathaniel as the lock and duo. Emmanuel Tuchuka at number six. So we're actually going to see Tuchuka versus Tuchuka for this matchup. Lundsberg at number seven. And now Ruan Finta slots in as the number eight. Now Humber at nine. Jordan Hendricks of the youngster at number 10. Can slot over some very handy penalties, which is something the Sharks have to make sure they don't allow the Lions to be able to do throughout this game is just tick over those three points. Juan Horn out on one wing, Maria Slow and also Reinhard Jonka in the midfield. So Lowe going up against his old side in the Sharks. Eduard van der Merwe at number 14. And Andreas Kutze going to be at 15. I hope you are well. What is your prediction for this game? I think I'm along the same lines as Gareth with the fact that it's going to be a close encounter. I am going to say the Sharks are able to sneak it though. I'll say that they win this game by eight points. Just because they've got the home field advantage, I'd like to think it would be relatively packed for a Friday night fixture. Should be a very entertaining one to get us fired up. And then we've also got another South African derby just around the corner. That will be the Stormers taking on the Bulls, which does start in only two hours, 15 minutes time. Looking through at the table, the way that it currently sits, we have got a Christmas emoji in the way. So we'll move that one very briefly. There we go. As you can see, Lentz are at the top of the table. Nine wins from nine, no one has been able to take them down yet, sitting on a full 43 points with that impressive points differential of plus 161. But this game, the Bulls and the Stormers, they are playing off a little bit later on, so we will know exactly who's in second at that point in time. But for this one, the Sharks in 10th, they'd love to be able to get themselves a decent win. And even though they've got one less than the Lions, they have played one less game. So if they do get themselves a comfortable win here, they could actually find themselves going up to around this region, somewhere around Edinburgh, maybe, even just maybe, overtaking the Lions. But they would have to beat them by quite some margin. Apparently, the society... We'll go like this, so it's not too loud in the eardrums. It's like quite a good crowd for this match. It's not quite Christmas Eve in South Africa, but we are getting relatively close to it, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope you guys are all excited for Christmas. Hope you've got all your plans organized. Hope you're ready to go because it is not too far away. And going Bulls by seven later, there's Birdie V. So there's probably a reasonable bet as well overall. 
pretty hard to pick these games in a, or to an extent, isn't it? Because with so many changes for the Sharks, you would wonder whether or not chemistry would be an issue. But then the other way around, the fact that when they added all of those players in, they didn't really gel the way that people thought they would. They thought if they just inserted Ombanambi, Itzabef, Sia Kalisi, Lucanio Arm, or at that point, no Lucanio Arm, actually, Makazoli Mapimpi, all these Springboks, I think the Sharks were hoping it would fix all the problems that they already had as a side, but it didn't. It actually, to an extent, made some of them a little bit more prominent. So now with the slightly younger side, I do see there it's actually going to be Gubran Robla at number four rather than Vincent Tuchuka. I wonder whether or not that might be a typo on both of my lineups part, unless, of course, maybe a late change for this matchup, which is certainly a possibility. But Amy Barrett, Theron, in charge of this one. Now, if I'm correct, this is the lady who does not take too much rubbish from the players. So I would say that this game, everyone's going to have to be on their best behavior. They certainly should be around this festive period. But do let me know your score predictions, ladies and gentlemen, for how many points each of these sides will get. It will be Jordan Hendricks are kicking off this one. We've done a lot of critic, uh, cricket on the channel recently. This feels a bit weird, talking about rugby. Right. We're ready to go. Jordan Hendricks uh, to kick it off for the Lions going from left to right in this URC matchup. We're already up to about round 10 of the URC. So both of these sides just want to continue looking for that top eight and themselves into a playoff game position. Hit up straight away by Pepsi Butta Lazy. Now rolled back by Grant Williams. Man, it didn't really get too many opportunities in that Springbok kit, but certainly could in the near future if they do decide to go that way. Heading into the World Cup. That is going to be a great kick downfield from Williams. It's it out to about 45 out from the Sharks line. Line out now for the Emirates Lions. This will be an interesting battle. Line out time. PJ Borta going here with Daniel Euster. And need as many straight as you can. They've got some pretty decent jumpers with uh, Willem Alberts and Nathaniel. Go straight to the front, though, to neither of them. So we went to their number six. Emmanuel Tichuka. Now the Lions have this one 45 metres out. Nice big bump off here. For Ruan Fenta. Nahamba back across. Using the big forwards. PJ Smith that time. Or JP Smith, sorry, I should say. It's actually, it's interesting. You've got JP and PJ as the front row of the Lions. And then you've got Asinathi Nala Bakanye. So he kind of ruins the trend that they're going with. In that front row of abbreviations, but that's going to be nice work from the Lions. Almost losing that ball, big shot on the number nine, Nohamba by Marius Lowe. Going to work out on Raz Kutsia, has to play half. Sharks not really giving up too many easy meters here at the moment. Now it looks like Nohamba will now look for that box. KK Amish Lions will cause a win because they wear red, just like Father Christmas says, Bianca. I guess decent logic in the end. Can't fault it. That's going to be tackled in the air. Biota Chamberlain. Bit unlucky as he did pretty much catch the ball, dive into the guy and then get the penalty. But that's the way the law book is written. Now Kerwin Bosch will be able to kick this one towards the touchline. Can't wait till uh, Muller Duplessis makes his debut for the Sharks. They'll be after Christmas, says Andre. He should be a decent player for them. A lot of these guys who play sevens do translate quite well into the 15 circuit. And one example, I guess, is Angelo Davids. When you look at the Stormers, he's done pretty well. Another player, I guess, even to an extent, when you look back in the day a little bit further, is Werner Koch, uh, Sanatla, all these guys who have come over with a pure bit of pace and have been doing very well. Have you heard about Nkosi? I know he went missing a while ago. I haven't heard what he's up to more recently, but I know he was found, and it was to do with his mental health, so I assume he's not going to be in the starting lineup for... They're signing quite some time just because they want to make sure that that's sorted out before they do end up, I guess, putting him back into the side. Although some would say that rugby to an extent can help that side of things as well. But we don't know, or I don't even know what's really going on, so I can't comment too much on it. Built the Chamberlain inside of the 22 after kick downfield from the Lions. Another decent clearing kick from the Sharks. So currently a bit more position going the way of the Emirates Lions here. With the Chamberlain, he's an option at 10, an option at 15. It really depends on where they want to use him. And yeah, he was found and the Bulls are helping him with his issue. There's Bertie V there and the Sharks by 15. There's Andre there for the prediction. 
a pretty good score. They win this game by 15. But the thing is, it's also very doable because it just seems to be that any time this is going to, this is a tricky statement, but any time South African sides play, I always say it, it's either going to be a close game or a runaway. We always hope for the close game. Sometimes we do get the runaway. And to be fair, these two sides looking relatively even at the moment, but the Sharks' defense seems to be something that has been helping them out. Another tackle in the SC, that's unlucky because he's pretty much jumped for that ball and then been taken down. It is a little bit of a rough rule, I think. We have already seen it in effect twice today, but now the Sharks on the halfway line, first real attack of the day for them, that they have been a decent attacking position, and Kerwin Bosch decides he wants to kick the ball away. But then the cock. Looking to line it up, looking into the sun, Andreas Kutsia. That is a fantastic take from the Lions fullback. They have now got the ball in the humber. Looking to go back across to the right-hand side. PGA Bota, another crash up. Trying to roll away there. Pipsu Bota lazy just manages to get out of there. And now it looks like, oh, that was a flippy one. Whoever that was. Decided to do some acrobatics. Now Grant Williams. Sorry, that was actually not humber. Now it's going to be slapped back, picked up by the Sharks. Now it's Williams, driven almost into touch, but just manages to get the offload away. Now the Sharks in position, furthest up the field that they've been so far here. Marius Lowe, ball on the outside, quick hands to Lavis Kakni. Now he's got Mapimpi with him and he finds him, but he drops the ball. Makazoli Mapimpi, just a little bit too far behind him. Was it just me or did I actually almost sound South African there with that runaway? <laughs> okay, Mbimbi wants them to go TMO. I think you'll find, mate, if they go TMO, it was probably a full pass anyway. You may not want them to have another look at it. But it's going to be a five meter scrum here for the Emirates Lions now. Passing across because only Mbimbi. Yeah, he just knocked it on, really. I don't think you want to see another replay of that, Mbimbi. And also, how do you feel about players uh, around the world mentioning that they have mental health issues and can't cope under high pressure? Says Luke, I think that they should definitely have support for them. But it is also one of those ones that I, once again, don't know too much about. So I can't comment hugely on how it's getting managed or anything like that because I just don't know about the sides. I know that being a player out there on the field, I've talked to ex-players before and... You know, you feel like you've got the weight of a nation on your shoulders. You make one mistake. And I think this is the perfect example for, like, cricket as well, which is what we've been doing more recently on the channel, which is why I go there. But, you know, you could score 100 runs, but if you drop a catch that would have won you the game, everyone lets you know about it for the next year. And, like, that's all something that builds up. And it's worse now with social media than it used to be because for a player – in the old days, to be able to get told that they're a bad player at all, like the person actually had to go to the ground and tell them. And people really didn't try that because they knew they'd get dropped. But now you can hide behind your phone going, hey, you're a terrible player. I'm going to send you all these messages. And there's no consequences of it, whereas the players, they kind of feel that impact. And I was like, Hamish, it's Xmas Eve, your side. It certainly is 4 a.m. on Christmas Eve. Doing well, though. I'm, I'm quite wide awake for a three-hour sleep. I've had myself. Now Jordan Hendricks. Are. Be kicking this one downfield with the goal line dropout. The Sharks now sitting 45 metres out from the line. Passed across again. The Pepsi Buta Lazy tries to go through. Good tackle by Nathaniel. Now sitting 35 metres out. Now the Sharks. Kerwin Bosch. Off one more. Biota Chamberlain. Skip pass. Huge bit of contact down the wing on Nutshire. Grant Williams, he's looking like he's getting to the breakdown a lot quicker than not humble, which is really helping the Sharks get that ball recycling quickly and keep it alive. Thomas the Toy playing Lucy prop for this game. Does normally prefer the tight head side, but maybe running a bit low with numbers for the Sharks. I agree, bonus point. Uh, indeed, they need this other day, and Sharks need a bonus point win today. As I'll say, and they're currently looking pretty strong throughout this first eight minutes of the game. They look like on attack, they're going to be a very handy side and defensively. Been pretty solid throughout the early stages. Makazoli Mapimpi now trying to step his way through again. 27 metres out from the line. Grant Williams now going to the short side. Bjorta Chamberlain inside ball to Njotje. Almost goes through. Still 22 out. Grant Williams now going off to the left. Tom Bosch. One more now. Marius 
low, driving the legs, inside ball, the pimpy gets it, and that will be the first try of the match for the Sharks. North we have got there, Amish today, you are coming in late. Night for the Sky Tree, we certainly are, 4 a.m., going right through, through to about, I believe it's 8.05 or so when the next game ends. We have still got another one straight after this, the Bulls taking on the Stormers, but great try, Marcus only Mpimpi, he gets one in the end. Would have been wanting to make sure that he did get one after that last little moment. What I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to click this. Okay, now we are about live here on Spark Sport. There's always quite a delay when watching on Spark, which does mean maybe the scoreboard's going to keep on updating a little bit further than we are. And Sharks need to move up, a, uh, move up the log, so they need to score tries, not take shots at goals without getting a penalty, says Andre there. And is there a weight restriction on how heavy props can be? I don't believe so. I think it's just, like, there's probably a line of where it becomes, like, you need a certain still amount of athleticism to be a prop. Like, I think probably, like, for an example, Nella Bacanye is probably about 140, 150. Well, maybe not quite 150, but he's certainly up there at the moment. Enjoyed a, well, he's going to enjoy a good Christmas, I would think, just around the corner. But 10 minutes into this one, Kuhl and Bosch, about 42 metres out, I'd say, on the angle. Looks like he's got plenty of it. In fact, he's got a lot of it. It's gone straight down the middle. 7-0 now to the Sharks. A good start to the match now for the home side. And Dervin and Thomas has been a Lucy most of his career. Actually, he's got fantastic versatility. Do you see, some of these guys are absolutely brilliant at juggling the two propping sides, aren't they? Whereas back in the day, like, you used to find a guy, he'd be a specialist, just loose head, just tight head, and they couldn't actually play the other side. Whereas you've got so many of these props that nowadays have come up from having to pretty much switch between the two, haven't they? I'm trying to think of another good example at international level. There are probably quite a few. New Zealand don't really have too many. They can play both, maybe off a Tonga Fussy is our best example. Whereas I think South Africans, like their front rows are just built different. They seem to be able to do a lot in terms of just pretty much handling any scrum because they've got these massive four packs that just straight into each other. And it's 5.15 p.m. in Northern Cyprus. And thanks for your service. Give me that. Says Rob Harding. No worries at all, mate. Hope you have been... Enjoying the commentary throughout the year. We've got plenty more coming in 2023. But be sure, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for the stream, bro. Can't even watch the match in this bloody country. That's a shame that they don't have, like, this is the perfect opportunity, right? To have a free round of the URC. And I'm going to pretty much give the marketing team a bit of advice because here's an idea. Last-minute Christmas presents in terms of people who have forgotten or people who have been still trying to decide what to get that rugby lover. First of all, you get to see a free trial of these two games on almost Christmas Eve, the Friday night before Christmas Eve. Then have some sort of deal going of like maybe if you sign up for three months of DSTV or one month of DSTV, you get one month free. And then from there, you're signing up a whole heap of new people watching the rugby. You just get a rugby lover or a rugby subscription. They'll be happy as. Yes. But give them a taste of it beforehand. See whether or not people are enjoying the games with the free round of the URC, whether it's on the URC YouTube channel or whether it's just on Supersport in South Africa, something like that. Give people an idea of what they'd be paying for if they got a subscription. And Antonio is 152 kgs, which is mental. It is when you see how quickly that man moves for 152 kgs. Looks like Sharks are playing more running rugby since Powell's taken over. There's Andre, and that's definitely some of that seven side coming into it, I'd say. It's always going to take a bit of time finding that new coach and kind of that chemistry between them and the players kicked him behind by Grant Williams. Marcus Olimapimpi once again. He's going to go for the grubber. It's put into touch by Jordan Hendrickson. Nice bit of work there between the two. Chasing after it, but I believe they've said lost backwards by Makazoli Mpimpi there, have they? Grant Williams just an attacking, running force. I'm sure he'd be great at sevens if he gave it a go. Grant Williams. Yeah, I believe that last touch might have come off Jordan Hendricks' arm, so it will now be a line-out for the Sharks. And Amish winners Australia versus South Africa. That will be in two days' time, Ryan. So not too far away, the 26th of December, New Zealand time. 
we come with Black Jacks, uh, Black Cats versus Pakistan full day, or in little chunks. Probably more likely in little chunks to an extent, but it would still be a relatively large amount of that test match, mainly because there is the overlap between the match between South Africa and Australia. So we'll probably end up finishing the South Africa Australia day and then jumping in for sessions two and three of the Black Caps Pakistan. That is the plan anyway, unless I can get a co-commentator, possibly one of my parents, to try and do some of the Pakistan-New Zealand sessions. But it is tricky with how close we are to Christmas. Of course, it's a very busy season, but now a nice run there. Brom Thomas, the toy, one metre shorter line here. The Sharks looking like they smell blood in the water once again, and it's not just the colour of the Lions kit. One metre out. Another advantage for the Sharks here. This has to be a try. With how they're setting up now, trying to go around the side. Pepsi put the lazy. There are a lot of bodies just lying on the ground here for the Sharks. It looks like they're all kind of tied in, like they're playing some game of Twister. No one's really getting up at the moment, including the big man at number two, Daniel Yosta, who's still waiting for his legs to come free. He's trying to crawl out. There we go. He has now got out of there. Johan Robola. As it's been in fact, Gubran Robola, sorry, with that ball. Now, once again, around the side, Daniel Yosta, just short. South African side here, the Sharks. They're certainly looking attacking throughout the first 15 meters or 15 minutes. Another advantage. Offload Fountain Nortshire. Great defense so far from the Lions, other than the fact they keep on giving away those advantages, which will cost them in the long run. Grant Williams off to Pepsi, put the lazy nice tackle made on him. Go under penalty advantage. Now the Sharks creep just that little bit closer to the line. Gubaran Krobala picks it up and goes right around the side. That's less than a meter now between them and the try line. Good work from the Lions, but a good leg drive. From the Sharks, another advantage. Unfortunately, this has got to the stage of about four advantages in a row. Look, Kanyuam off to Chamberlain. And it will be Chamberlain who scores the second try of the match now for the Sharks. And yes, love it. Can't watch any internationals in uh, this country. We don't exist as a country, says Silla in there as well. And because Brisbane Heat wins, says Ryan. And also, hey, Amish bro, I hope you're doing well, says T7. I am indeed. What competition are the Sharks competing in? Or is it the European Comp or South Africa only? So this is the URC competition. There have been quite a few recently, which does make it harder to follow. But yeah, the United Rugby Championship competition that the Sharks currently are sitting in 10th. And with a big win here, could move themselves right up to about 5th or 6th place, I believe it is. Here's the table here. So they could overtake the Lions if they win this game with a bonus point which at the moment just seems like a matter of time. They're 16 minutes in, scoring for fun at the moment. And the Lions just haven't really got their feet under them for the first 16 minutes of this match. And that will just get harder and harder as we wait for the halftime whistle, was what I was going to say. I was getting distracted by Kuh and Bosch. And trying to work out how far out this kick it is. It is probably about 40 on the other side. I had to feel for the Lions, though. Uh, they work so hard to develop great players just for the Sharks and Bulls to buy them when they hit their prime. Yeah, they've got a very good youth system, it seems, for the Lions. And like you mentioned, anytime they get like a guy who looks like, oh, he's the next up and coming guy, and then pretty much gone within a season, unfortunately. Just to the big money clubs, that one's going to go away to the side. Yeah, the Lions are always one of those teams out of the South African sides. I say the Lions, everyone probably underestimates them because they don't have those massive name players, but they do just keep on going, if that makes sense. They always are in the fight in a contest. This isn't the best example. I can't admit that, but, you know, they score a try before half time theoretically. Maybe get a penalty as well, and they're not too far off. But the problem is trying to break the momentum that the Sharks currently got. That might do it. Little kick forward. Edward van der Merwe just scores the try for the Lions. There we go. That's a perfect example, I guess. Oh, no, he's, he's acting like he's signing a contract. He better not sign for someone else or else the Lions will get more annoyed. I think, and skill isn't too good. There's RT7 for Ryan Jansi van Zrensberg as well. And he's getting a very hard runner. He played one game for South Africa against the Barbarians. Hope he gets a chance again for the box. Um, it's going to be tricky, that inside centre role, because I think Damien De Linda currently has it very well secured, but then it's that next option, whether it is an Esther Hazen, whether it's a reshuffle of the back line. So, you know, inside centre is probably a good position to be playing at the moment. 
and tried sending you a sticker, not possible. Very sorry, says Salah. No worries at all, mate. By the sounds of it, Turkey doesn't uh, allow you to do so. Maybe for it. Interesting. See, I know that there are countries that do restrict what you can do. And I guess Turkey might be one of them. And natal sharks versus lions back in the days. There's literal with the gulting sharks. Is that, oh, sorry, the gulting lions. Is that how you'd say it? I feel like I'm terrible at the pronunciation of that one word. Jordan Hendricks uh, does get it over. And just like that, 12 points to seven. So what I was trying to say before Edwell van der Merwe scored the try pretty much off kickoff, is Lava Skakni unable to hang on to that one, just falls backwards, and Edwell van der Merwe, the skill to be able to just tap it forward a little bit rather than send it flying, it's actually very impressive from van der Merwe. But yeah, the Lions are one of those sides that always will try and stay in the contest, and then you just never know whether or not they're going to win it till the final whistle, which is something we have seen. I mean, we saw it in that game of the Challenge Cup, how they went about a 31-31 draw for one of the Northern Hemisphere sides. I think that was up against a French side, if I'm not wrong there. The kick forward from Biota Chamberlain. Nicely taken by Nohamba. Wrestled down a good low tackle made by Pepsi Buta. Lazio and Rascotza once again has to play half. Lions now looks like they might consider another box kick. It's actually something we've seen a lot from them throughout this game, but they haven't really had too many other opportunities. Do too much on attack. Gone deep. Makazoli Mapimpi looks for it. He's going to knock that ball on. It's available now for the Lions, and they will actually have the scrum feed. We've seen a little double knock on in the process, but this game is already one quarter of the way through. We've seen three tries, so the chance of a bonus point. But actually, both of these sides, I would say, relatively high. At this point in time, number 13 there, Arena Yonka, just not quite using that one the way he would have liked. And then, yeah, just a mini knock on. A little bit later from him, Manny Wurtuchuka, meant that we did see the scrum feed for the Lions. Yeah, anyone who is new, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We've got plenty more of the URC, the Champions Cup, and of course, the big one and only about Eight months' time, maybe nine at this point, the Rugby World Cup. We are going to be covering every single game on the channel. A lot of question marks. Are the South Africans going to be able to make it back-to-back -back World Cups for 2019 and 2023? Nice run from Maria Slow. Moves up to 40 metres out. Nice work here from the line. Probably their best. Attacking chance of the day. I said that about the Sharks not too long ago, but the Lions really, I haven't had a lot of attack. It's actually going to be another kick downfield from Jordan Hendricks. So that seems to be the tactic. Just try and force the Lions deep in their 22. Muckers on him. Pimpy takes the catch inside of that 22 and takes the mark. And Pepsi Putalese really developed as a player over the past couple of years. He has, I think, definitely future Bok material because not only does he have that skill that he's got, but he's also got relatively good leadership by the sounds of it. He did, how old was, did he do the under-19 South African side? Was that what competition he was in, or is he just being Sharks captain? I believe he coached, or not coached, sorry, captain one of his younger sides back in the day. Oh. Okay, Maka's only Mapimpi is not too happy here. I think there's been a little bit of a problem with the ruling. And it's actually going to be a scrum feed for the Lions. Pretty much. Maka's only Mapimpi has passed the ball across to Kerwin Bosch, who's taken the catch, kicked it downfield. But because Maka's only Mapimpi did not tap that ball, that actually means that it's a scrum feed for the Lions only about 10 metres out. That's a massive... Massive mistake to make for such an experienced player like Makazoli Mapimpi and Lions. The only South African clubs that have a skills development program, all the club or other clubs benefit from the time and money invested in our youth. Tears Bianca and also we win back-to-back -back World Cups. Or to build a statue of Rassi in the middle of Pretoria. Says it was right. I'm going to have a crack at your name because I know that I haven't said it yet. You bought... Oh, okay. You... Boyengwe. 
Yang Wei. Is that how you say it? I'm sorry if I'm saying that very badly. Yeah, getting in the under 20s. That's going to be now actually going back a penalty in favor of the Sharks. Lions now making the mistake, actually advancing a little bit too early by the sounds of it. So I guess the Sharks, it didn't cost them a massive amount by them making that big mistake. And I says, Denny, welcome in. I hope you are doing very well. And I was a close enough pro. <laughs> mm. I did. I think I butchered it a little bit though, didn't I? I wasn't quite as smooth as I would have liked. Theo and Bosch now kicking towards the touchline. 24 minutes through this game at the moment. The Sharks move up to halfway with the line out throw. And you'll use the, the man who will be throwing this one in. Just listening to the referee. Sounded like there was some sort of warning that was going to be going to one of the sides. I was in the South African flag. Drum Salah in there as well. But the fact that we get not just one, but two South African derbies on Christmas Eve, New Zealand time, and also the day before Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve Eve, I guess it would be, in South Africa. That is pretty exciting stuff. And these two sides, I believe they actually play next week, or at least two South African sides play off again next week by the sounds of it. That's going to be another mistake. Unfortunately, at the breakdown, the Lions are just not quite getting it right. At the moment, Marius Lowe penalised for going off his feet. Now the Sharks, once again, will be able to look for the touchline. Plenty of time left in this first half. Go Lions, says Atene in there as well. But like I mentioned, Leinster, they're actually unbeaten in this URC competition. And a lot of these South African sides would love to be the side that are able to beat them. But looking through it next week, it is going to be on the 1st of January, the Sharks versus the Bulls, the Stormers versus the Lions. Those are the two matchups that we have got. I believe this week, Leinster actually have a Munster, though. So that is a possibility of maybe a defeat for the Leinster men. Then we actually skip through so it will be the 7th of January, and that's when we start to see South African sides taking on the uh, other sides from the Northern Hemisphere, such as Dragons, Bulls, and Munster Lions. Those games actually overlap here in New Zealand on uh, the 7th of January, so we'll have to decide which match we do. And also, Sharks with Bulls is going to be tasty. Mm, going to be an exciting game and a great way to start the new year. And also, we have got there where we tonight. No, Big Bash says, Aiden, pretty much me. George and Daniel, we were hanging out for Daniel's birthday. Ended up going through to about maybe 5.30-ish, which is roughly around the same time as that first game did start up. And then other than that, pretty much throughout the night or throughout the evening, I guess is the best way of describing it, I was getting ready for what we are doing for Christmas, getting everything prepared for when my sister does come home today. Now that we are on the 25th, only or the 24th, I should say, Makazoli Mipimbi, Try to go right up the middle. And Raz Kutsia wrestles him down nicely. We have got a donation from Mark. Thank you very much, mate. I always send you Christmas greetings from Zamunda. Hopefully I've said that correctly and hugely appreciate it, uh, Mark. Hope you have a great Christmas and a very happy new year as well. You see Buta Lazy now sitting only a few metres out from the 22. Nice step in the cock. That's the first time he's hit the ball, I believe. Now it's going to be kicked in behind from Kerwin Bosch. Just letting all a little bit of a juggle there for Edward van der Merwe. So instead he decides he has to run it straight up to the 22. Brilliant run there. Oh, looks like Gerbrand Grobler might have taken a bit of a knock in the process here. And can we please beat your sister Mo since we have met your family, says Aiden. I don't think that's a good idea, Aiden, seeing as I've heard your relationship history uh, with a few of the recent girls. So I don't think I want to introduce you to my sister. No offense. And I was like, Sharks versus Transvaal Mitchell. There's D in there, or D in there, sorry, I should say, 40 metres out. Graham Williams goes across to Thomas the Toy. Nicely run forward from Carlos Sari. In fact, no, that was Thomas the Toy. I didn't think it looked like Sari, but I was uh, trusting the commentators for that one. Sharks, good ball retention in the breakdowns. I don't believe they've had too many loose carries so far. Yusta now. Then 30 metres out from the line. Grant Williams goes back across inside ball to Lukhanuam. Great to see him back in a kit playing on rugby again. It's been quite a wee while since we have actually seen that man in action. And now that he's back for the URC in the Champions Cup, I feel like it's kind of in that situation of 
everyone's got that question mark of whether or not he's going to be able to keep playing at his very best or whether he is going to end up possibly, well, he's not dropping down the South African pecking water. He's still definitely the pick at outside centre. Fair enough. I mean, uh, you do have a good point. I mean, I promise to behave myself, says Aiden. Although <laughs> the fact that you have to promise to behave yourself probably tells you everything you need to know as well there. But now it's going to be kicked deep. Jordan Hendricks has done well off the left boot, gets away a slight clearing kick, but it's still going to be only about 15 metres out from the line. The Sharks once again with another line-out opportunity here. Just looking through at the few of the other matches that we've got coming up for the USC. Glasgow Stormers, that's going to be the 9th of January. Connacht play the Sharks, that is on the 8th of January. And I believe then we've got, yeah, about two or three weeks off where they are playing Champions Cup Rugby. Once again, it looks like Gerberan Krovola is drooling. Oh, he took a big knock. I don't know whether or not there might have just been a shot to the body maybe for him. He wasn't looking too flash for a bit, Gerberan. Only 29 minutes through this game. The Sharks, they're sitting on 12, seven points on the board for the Lions, but a good rolling more opportunity here for the South Sea Sharks. Possibly get themselves their first try. Of the second quarter, I guess you could call it, of the game. But Werner Koch also down. It's only had one singular run. Looks like it's taken it all out of him. And I was going to say, by the sounds of it, we are having ourselves the water break and can't see anyone beating Leinster. Says Enigma there. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a tough one. But I think Munster in their upcoming game, just because it's a home game. For Munster as well. Like, that's probably the best chance of Leinster being beaten for a few weeks at least. And then if you look through, who else have they got coming up in 2023? I don't actually think they've got the updated 2023 for Leinster yet on the one that I use. See, they've got Cardiff. They've got Ospreys. Neither of those two, I think, pose a real threat. Then they've actually got Dragons. Round 15, they've got Edinburgh. That could be a close-ish game. And then they've got the Stormers on the 25th of March. So that's probably about the next time we see someone challenge Leinster to that extent. And Jordan Hendrickson must have the biggest bit of rugby. The man's lost 70 metre penalties with ease. Mm. He, I've seen that clip where he was able to get that 70 metre go over. And it's a very handy skill to have. And, you know, with Pollard injured, and still a few question marks around who's going to be that next South African team, whether it is Valimza, whether it's Labok, what the options are. I know once Pollock comes back, he's kind of going to have himself locked in for quite a bit of time, I would think. But, yeah, it would be an intriguing one to see what happens, whether or not they give a guy like Jordan Hendricks a chance. I remember saying a while ago, it was one of the first South African games that I watched, and I said that he looks like an up-and-coming, talented player. Uh, he got injured and was out for about eight months after that. There was a knee injury, I think. Now that he's back, does still look like a very handy player. And do you have any idea if the Sharks are ever going to use? Take Abraham says, Andre, if they don't, there are certainly South African sides that would use him. And it's just that case, now that they've got Mapimpi back from box duty, maybe if the box were playing again, he'd get another little crack, but... Yeah, there's times where you look at like certain signings and certain players and go, they're being wasted where they are and they need to get a little bit more chance to show what they can do. Currently only a few metres out from the line. Gubra, Robla, close to getting over the try line. Now Daniel Yuster, that was not the way to go. He's gone straight over the middle. Going to be going back for the advantage. One offside. It'll be against JP Smith. I can't see. Uh, I can see them doing the double. And that's from a Welshman. There's Enigma there. And also we have got the Now Sharks versus DN. This is the Trevor Mitchell. And anyway, besides that, oh, what are you going to have for Christmas lunch? Christmas lunch, I think I'm just going to have my wheat bix Christmas teas when we are going to be having the family over. So I think we've got the turkey ready to go. There might be a ham out there as well. My dad actually won a ham at golf. <laughs> so that's where the hams come from. It's a decent sized one. But yeah, we're having the family over for dinner. And then Boxing Day, we're straight into two test matches, pretty much back-to-back. -back. And four years ago, I would have never thought South Africa would have the depth they do at 10 right now. It was like a dream. And it took them a while to be willing to use Marnie Labok. That seemed to be the one that a lot of people wanted for a long time. And 
the whole selector and coaching staff were like, nah, we'll just, we'll make you wait just that little bit longer. Have you done all your Xmas shopping, brother? I have, I believe. I don't think I've forgotten anything at this stage. No, I think I'm all good. Got all the presents lined up. I haven't wrapped them yet. Wrapping the presents is always the tough part, isn't it? Because you want it to look so pristine. And in the end, you're just like, maybe I should just get a little bag. Put it in the little bag. And Abraham's is a good player, a uh, really good and exciting player. Says Andre there. So like it is going to be a five-meter scrum here for the Sharks. Actually, the choice that they decided when they had their advantage. Someone left a towel on the field. So they do have to shift that. And awesome stuff, says Bertie V. But I think the thing that's going to be more dangerous is the Boxing Day sales this year. Because I've already blown the Kiwi Lads budget almost for 2023 as well. Like, I always say any money the channel makes goes back into the channel. That has happened, but I've also now gone into debt with my own money, putting it back into the channel so that we can get, I guess, all the equipment that we need to be able to make the videos better. I still need to pop out tomorrow for a couple of presents, says Bertie V. And there, so yeah, we'll be pretty busy. I think for Christmas Eve, that's going to be a double blow of the whistle. Grant Williams wanted to take the quick tap, but he wasn't allowed to. It was a mutual front row droppage. We don't have to reset it once again. Currently nine minutes left of the first half. This is that period where the Lions need to make sure they don't allow South African side and the Sharks to get themselves another try. Who is that? Is that... It's not PJ Bota. Oh, it's Yako Fosaki. They've actually had to make the change there. I was looking at him. I was going, that's not what I remember PJ Bota looking like. You guys are lucky Xmas is cancelled in South Africa this year. Says my friend. <laughs> I feel like I'm better off calling you my friend so that I don't absolutely butcher your name again. I'll be going very early. Says Birdie V. As I want to visit New Zealand for a holiday, says Andre. I can definitely recommend the summer stage. If you are going to be heading to New Zealand, it's actually pretty nice at the moment. Yeah, as you can tell, like normally I'm wearing a hoodie when it's nighttime. We're currently 4.30 a.m. and I only need a t-shirt. And even that, like it's still pretty hot. Even with the t-shirt, that's going to be a little knock on from the shark. They were only three meters out, still attacking from that scrum. Daniel Yusta put it down. A big mistake to have for the sharks. And none on my side and dupes. And I was like, which, uh, where in South Africa are you? Says Bertie V. And who's got the tries? And bloody hell, what have you done to blow all the Kiwi lads for the money? 2023. Uh, already we still in 2022, pretty much. I ended up getting a GoPro because we are going to be doing a lot of cricketing footage on the channel in the future. I actually ended up filming my innings betting about a week ago, I believe it was, uh, with the GoPro on the top of the helmet. So that was not a cheap venture. And then also alongside that, we ended up getting another microphone so that we could do the Kiwi Lads podcast. We filmed the podcast, but the audio, we didn't actually get to use the mic audio. We had to go with the audio from way back here, which is why it's taken a little bit longer to try and, I guess, get it to sound not terrible, which is normally what you want for a podcast. You want it to sound actually not too bad. Peter, Peter Maritzburg. I can almost say that one not too badly. Kick downfield from the Lions into their half. Now the Chamberlain waited for it. Got Vinnikok on his right if he wants to use him. Instead, just run straight up the middle now. Seeing 30 metres out. Grant Williams, a lot of pressure on him. Stolen by Marius Lowe. Vinnikok, we saw an impressive suplex from him in a breakdown not too long ago. Big charge down from Gerberan Grobelo. Great work from... That's Horn. We've hardly seen Juan Horn. You got this match in Ireland versus uh, France, 2023 World Cup final. There's a chance. I mean, both sides are very good form at the moment. Six Nations will be interesting because I feel those two are probably definitely favourites to go on and get themselves a possible victory. But England as well with the new coach. I know a lot of people still sitting there wondering whether or not they will be able to get something going. Now, Bjorta Chamberlain again. On the halfway line, good work in the breakdown from Maria Slow for the Lions, but unable to break through and get that ball. Thomas the toy now. Now the run, 34 minutes through the game at the moment. Looks like there's actually a player down. I think it's Daniel Yuster, maybe for the Sharks. No, he's back up to his feet. He's actually done well because he looked a bit rattled earlier on. Now, nice backline movement. Looking like it's going to be opening up. Chamberlain 
Saves the pass from Yancey van Zorensberg. Both of the touchline muckers on him a pimpy. 40 metres out from the Lions line now. Back across Johan Lavaskakni. Or in fact, no, sorry, it is Giandre Lavaskakni. Now, Rola offload off to Hiran Andrews. Look for the offload from his back. Does find Rola again. The locks are running rampage at the moment for the Sharks. Some great stepping from Rokanyuam. Moves up to now only 25 metres out. Kerwin Bosch back across to Carlos Sadie up against his old side. Now another one. Going to be a knock on. Then the cock dropped by Daniel Yusta. And they'll go back for it now. Did my boy Mapimpi score? He did indeed. Out for water down on Dubs. Now I didn't go to the beach, is what I heard on the news. And yeah. Says. <laughs> New ball. Boy Ying Wei. Ying Wei. That's that first bit. It's getting me. <laughs> Boy Ying Wei, I think I've got, but it's that first little bit. Boy Ying Wei. So it ends up be almost making a boing noise, doesn't it? And Biota has been really good, or has been uh, doing really well at fullback. Hard to see how Abalili Fasi gets back in this team. The only place I can see him slotting in really at the moment would probably be right wing. But then Werner Koch, I don't think, has done too much wrong either. The only slight critique you could say is maybe not being in the action enough with the amount that they have gone down that right-hand side. But I think that's just a case of a lot of the other players just want the ball when it's close to the wing. Such as, I mean, we just saw Gerber and Grobler having a few runs relatively close by. But currently four and a half minutes left. Not Nacho. Getting a bit of medical attention there. It looks like also Daniel Yusta has to go off. I don't know if that's just a substitute or maybe an HIA. He's going down the tunnel. He is. So I was correct in that regard of him looking a little bit rocked earlier on. I was surprised that he was continuing. But it is now going to be Kieran van Fieden. Man who absolutely loves a rolling mall. Now after 20 minutes we had seen two tries from the Sharks. One try from the Lions, and I actually said that I saw a bonus point possibility for both of these sides, but now they've really slowed down and not really scoring at that frantic pace that we thought they would, and don't know why I thought you're in Cape Town, says Gareth. In there as well. Yeah, I hope you are doing well also, Gareth. I did see earlier on, no. Was it today or yesterday we were on the Discord? Might have been yesterday, wasn't it? But yeah, Gareth, have you got all of your Christmas planned out? What are the plans? In fact, that is a question to everyone in the chat. What is everyone doing for Christmas? With it only being about 24 hours away for us here in New Zealand, but probably about 36 hours away, or maybe closer to 40 for you guys. And South Africa, Grant Williams goes on the back, 22 metres out of the arm. Man with him instead, decides to take the contact, gives it off to Makazoni Mapabu, who wasn't touched. They just ran out of space down that near side. Now, the Lions are once again going to have themselves the line out. Yeah, Makazoni Mapabu not too happy with not receiving that pass from Lukanyo arm. Normally pretty good at deciding when to offload the ball that was probably not that time foot on the line and Christmas bro for me and have a mum and law over and cooking up a storm and I love Derv says Bertie V and I'm in uh, PNB for Christmas PNB PNB I should know what that stands for but I feel like my brain's not letting me know what it stands for an all planned family lunch. Luckily, we have a gas stove, so load shedding can fly. So even on Christmas, they still do load shedding, Gareth. That seems very rough. I feel like Christmas is the one day that maybe they should consider not doing load shedding, just so that like everyone can enjoy that one's gone into touch. From Jordan Hendricks, a very good kick down field. Unlucky for Yusta. I'm glad to see Fun Thirin get some game time. Yeah, I think Fun Thirin. As long as he gets his line-out throws more accurate, I think that's the one thing that's let him down a little bit in the past. Like, they score a huge amount of rolling more tries, but sometimes that line-out throw under pressure is when it's trickier. Peter Maritzburg, ah, okay, DMB. That was mentioned just before, wasn't it? 
I'm not wrong one moment. We will go like this. I felt like I was about to sneeze, so I thought I would delay the inevitable. And yeah, bro, even on Evan Xmas. Surely there's been enough power saved throughout the rest of the 364 days. They can, they can let one slide. Hansen, boy, Janssen. Run to Rensburg there, nice run. Yeah, great. Bit of hand from Gerberan Grovelo. Only two minutes left now of this first half. Lava Skakri. Near the touchline, trying to get the clean out there. I believe it was Werner Koch. Being told to leave that one alone. For the Lions. If the Sharks can get another try here, bonus point definitely just around the corner. But if they can't, might be a bit, little bit more 50-50. And gas those are a must in South Africa. Sounds like it. So what else is something... I guess you can't really get an electronic TV, can you? Or you probably... They still have those ones that you can crank, like the old school days. That really shows off my sunburn, doesn't it? It looks bad now, but it's not actually as bad as it was. If I go like that, it just looks like I'm tanned. I really, I'm not. It's just like a little bit more red. Okay, another penalty. Sounds like it's a neck roll by 15 black. So that's actually Chamberlain who's done the neck roll. That was a great shot on Kieran Farmfera straight away by Nutla Bakanye. That nicely bonus point for the Sharks in the second half, says Andre. I can see it happening. Currently only the two tries away. The Lions, though, if they can get a good start to their second half, I think they would also probably not have a terrible chance. All right, we'll go like this. We'll go like that. There we go. I was just checking to see what the odds were saying for this match. It does seem like still the Sharks' heavy favourites with the fact that they are underdogs. Oh, sorry, with the fact that they are home sides, I should say, and also with that five-point buffer. Hey, the timer's back on. Only another 55 seconds left. But Jordan Hendricks are going to be kicking it downfield. And big, big love. Oh, sorry. Big love, big love. From Sebastian there. And with the Christmas emoji, which is missing from the top corner. When I did the lineups, I took it down. Put that one back up. There we go. Welcome in, Sebastian. Hope you're doing well. We are excited for the Christmas period, which is just around the corner. I think, if I'm not wrong, this next live stream that we've got, the next URC match, is actually the last live stream we've got before Christmas. I was going to be doing the BBL bit later on today. Oh, I did think originally that my sister was arriving a bit later on in the day, but I think she's going to come back at about 3 p.m. New Zealand time, and she may want to sleep after her flight. So I think more than likely I will end up just being slightly quieter throughout Christmas Eve. That's going to be a wonky throw. A knock-on as well there from Marius Lowe. Now... Available for Gerber and Grobola. We've just heard the halftime siren. Looks like the Sharks, they will be kicking this one into touch. And that will be the end of the first half. 12 points to 7. And I love Christmas because there's so much more joy to kill, says Sebastian there. Lovely. <laughs> You'll have a lot of fun in the near future. And you never count the lines out. And also, I think a lot of people in South Africa using generators, I'm sure, says... Andre, and also what was Lacanio's injury? I could be wrong with this statement, but I believe it was a knee. Something in the leg anyway for Lacanio arm. Or have I got him mixed up with Andre Pollard? Were they both leg injuries, or was there one who was another injury not involving a leg? Too sure, but currently first half down in this game. We've seen two tries from the Sharks. One from Makazole Mapimpi, and then the other try was scored. By Biota Chamberlain. Then for the Lions, we've seen the one try, and that was actually Edwell van der Merwe. The one time that we've actually seen him touch the ball. And that was when he was able to score his try. So currently a relatively close game. I don't see this game getting completely as a runaway, unless the Sharks are the first team to score in the second half. Maybe from there they'll just continue their momentum just a little bit more. But a relatively decent first half. The first 20 was certainly better than the second 20. We saw a bit more of a chess match throughout the second 20. Looks like a decent-sized crowd, though, there at Kings Park Stadium. So this is the first of two South African matches that are taking place. 
first one. This one, second one, Stormers versus the Bulls. Should be a great game of rugby. And it is kicking off at 6.15. So only another hour and 25 minutes away for us here in New Zealand. Here we go. We are better now. Do let me know off the bench who you guys think will be the super subs for these two sides. We all go like this. There we go. So these are the benches. We've already seen Van Feren make his way out onto the field. We've also already seen Vasaki out there for the Lions. I've got Lula. Also, Jacobs in the front row. Gubran Grobler, he was supposed to be coming off the bench, but he's actually started this game. They've got the experience of Sia Khaleesi, Jaden Hendricks, uh, then also Kronje and Tupuai in the midfield. And for the Lions, they've got Sitoli Smith. That is Ruan Smith. He will be replacing the big man who's been flying around the field at Thai Air Prop. They've got another fun feeder, just a different spelling. And then also it is going to be Yako Creo at 20. Warner, 21, uh, Lombard, 22, and then Pena, the last man off the bench for the Lions. So there's still a lot of time left in this one. And Peter Maritzburg says, Barry, there for what PMB stands for. And we don't uh, don't find it a problem once you have the schedule. And with gas to cook uh, with, doesn't really matter to me. Uh, when I say we, I mean my family, says Gareth in there. But yeah, I guess you'd slowly more and more get used to it it's probably frustrating for you guys who do love watching the rugby live and then it overlaps with the load shedding but i guess even that you probably get used to not being able to watch certain things live because this is a question gareth south africa versus australia i believe the next test match starts at 12 30 p.m new zealand time so theoretically that's about middle of the night for you guys in south africa so does that mean for some people, in terms of being able to watch the cricket, it will actually be cutting off for them during that time? Or is it only at certain stages of the day for a majority of places that it seems to be like relatively close to a time? Was that even a question? I don't think it was. I think I just said a whole heap of words and it slightly expected you to know what I was talking about. But that, I don't know, it might have almost come across as a sentence. In the end, looking through at that test kind of schedule that we've got coming up on the 26th of December, it's going to be Australia versus South Africa, 12.30, nice early start. And this way, uh, we've got you, Hamish, says Gareth there. And we are certainly going to be here. We've got a lot of the other matches of the URC, cricket, rugby. Sleep is underrated, no, overrated. That's the way around, we should say it. I've got three hours tonight. I think the plan is going to be once we finish that second South African live stream today, going to be heading back to sleep for a few more hours, waking up in the afternoon, finishing tidying up so that it looks all nice and clean in here for when the family comes over tomorrow night. And then also still try and get through some of that cricket and GoPro footage because that's taken way too long to edit. I'm currently at the stage of adding pretty much like little text captions of what was being said just because I don't know how much the wind affects it. I want to make sure you guys know what was being said in terms of the sledging. So it's it's taken quite a bit of time. I think it's almost going to be a New Year's video now, unfortunately. And the Proteas need to produce something in the uh, in Australia to reach the World Test Championship final. Not even the most optimistic person, just Bangladesh, to stop India, says Sebastian. Yeah. It's a tricky one for them, isn't it? They're currently in their second Test match. It doesn't look like Bangladesh have got this one either. So... Yeah, they're going to have to rely on some of the other results, aren't they? The Proteas, I believe they need one win in Australia. And then they have to beat West Indies twice in South Africa in about March. I believe that's their plan or the tactic anyway. And they'll just have to hope that they do end up getting it right. There's still that question for Australia, though, whether or not it's going to be Scotty Boland or whether they're going to go with Josh Hazelwood. That's quite a hard decision to make. I believe they'll go Boland just because Hazelwood, even though he's bowling now, you don't want to risk him getting injured more seriously. Worst comes to worst, he comes back for the third test up against the South Africans, which is only not too far around the corner as well. But hopefully this Boxing Day test goes a little bit further than just the two days. Hopefully we get at least four days of action. And Jonathan, is there a good day, Amish? Welcome in, mate. Hope you are doing very well. Hope you're excited for Christmas just around the corner. I know that for you guys in South Africa, it's currently sitting 23rd of December. 
and it must be kind of late afternoon. So hopefully you guys have all got everything sorted, got your food organised for the for, uh, I was gonna say for the final, but for the lunch, for the tea, depending on what you're doing, and you are ready to go for your Christmas. Looking through at Boxing Day as well, though, there is Pakistan versus New Zealand. That is also going to be taking place. That is at 6 p.m. So I believe our plan is going to be to cover the first two sessions of Australia, South Africa, and then maybe the third session and then transfer over to Pakistan, New Zealand, second session. That may be the plan. So that will be at 8.40 p.m. start for us in New Zealand. Either that or try and get a co-commentator to possibly do our first session of Pakistan, New Zealand each day. But I think that will be tricky with it being around a Christmas period and dashing through the stumps with a well-directed ball. Bangladesh will fail. They can do F4. Don't let Ryan hear you say that, Sebastian. He might get quite hurt. And do you see Black Gaz winning first test series in Pakistan? Your prediction? Not really. Um, I think they might get a few draws. Black Gaz and then maybe force a result of one of their games. I don't know whether it will go their way of Pakistan, though, but the big thing is New Zealand won't be able to play like England did. And for England to be able to do what they've done, winning three test matches on Pakistan soil, like even just winning that first one was absolutely incredible because it didn't look like a pitch that would ever force a result. They could have been betting on day 14 and it would still be a road. So I think for England to be able to do a 3-0, it should give New Zealand confidence. But I think it's because of that extra bit of pressure that England bring to test match cricket at the moment with the fact that they are so aggressive that actually worked in their favour. So the Black Cats, I mean, don't get me wrong, I can see them winning a game or two, maybe, but they're certainly going to have to make sure that they progress the test match quick enough for there to be a result. And that's the thing for Pakistan and a couple of the other matches, they were over a little bit earlier than that first one. So that gives New Zealand a bit of hope, I guess. I think we're a little bit worried, though, at the moment, the New Zealand public, that is about who our spin option is. Because I know they've got AGS Patel, they've got Ish Sodi, and maybe Mitchell Satner might be the three that they've got as options. I can't think of who else we've got at the moment. And the difference is we don't really have our part-time spinners in there. Whereas a lot of other sides around the world, whether that's Australia, you look at their part-time, you've got Travis Head, you've got... Also, Manus Levishain, maybe even Steve Smith to an extent, just to have some sort of different thing to throw at the opposition. Michael Bracewell, oh, if they got him in there. And I'd say he's also an option. Haven't seen him a huge amount at test match level, so it'll be interesting to see how much they do bowl him. And then you've also got, I mean, even a better example at the moment is probably England, because even when you look through at the top order, you've got Joe Root, I feel like Kane Williamson, if he's stepping back from captaincy, he should certainly consider picking up a bit of the off spin just to be able to give New Zealand that other bowling option. But yeah, we'll be interested to see how Bracewell goes. I haven't actually seen the squad that New Zealand have sent to Pakistan, which is something I probably should see. And why Ben Sears not picked for the series, he's the, the 150 bowler, isn't he, coding? Which, I mean, he would have been a good option on Pakistan pitches, maybe just because of that inexperience, they didn't want to risk him getting tonked around a little bit. Definitely if the pitch, like they don't know whether it is going to be a good one or not. So the last thing you want for a youngster with his first test match is to send him over there, have him bowl 20 overs for 100 runs and lose all confidence. Uh, not really what you want. And bowl brilliant off against England, says Sebastian in there as well. It's actually quite a few good test matches coming up, isn't there? Which is great news for us cricket lovers. Around there, rugby-wise, we haven't got a huge amount of international matches until the Six Nations, which will be starting in February, which is pretty much around the time of the end of most of the cricket. I believe New Zealand, Pakistan, there's one on the 10th. There's the day nighter. It starts at, oh, it starts at 10.30 p.m. New Zealand time, so that one will be a little bit more rough. Or is that, no, that's an ODI. Okay, we're all right in that regard. I don't know if we'll cover the ODIs on the channel, though. Because if it starts at 10.30 p.m. New Zealand time during the week, more than likely by that stage, I'll be back into work. And, yeah, it'll be interesting. See how it does end up going. New Zealand versus India. Their ODI start at 9 p.m. That is on the 18th of January. So pretty much straight from Pakistan to India by the looks of it there. And then, yeah, they pretty much close out January 
with a couple T20s up against India. But currently, I believe we aren't too far away from the two sides making their way back out onto the field. Currently 12 points to seven. Muckers on them are Pimpy and Chamberlain, the two try scorers for the Sharks. Just the one for the Lions. They've only really had one chance inside of the 22, though. And it was Edward van der Merwe who was able to get the job done in the end for them. Joffre Archer is back in the ODI squad for the South Africa Tour, says Sebastian there. Back in the English side, I assume that is. Where are their ODIs? One moment. Is that in February? No. March? No. April? When do they play ODIs in South Africa? Sebastian. And dashing through the stumps and all that. Says Sebastian there. And also, do you happen to know how the blind cricket teams are doing? Blind cricket teams, not too sure, unfortunately. Are they currently playing, Bianca? Do let me know. I know that it's very impressive watching them play. Lion Cricket, I'm a Cape Town Lion supporter. I also, oh, I love cats. Lions are just big cats. My cat also love Kiwi Lads commentary, says Ruth. And there as well, well, we appreciate your cat watching and also you too, Ruth. Oh, we are at it. But currently the two sides just about to make their way back out onto the field here for a second 40 minutes of that first half. Look at it somewhere around the hour mark, which theoretically means this game will probably be finished by about 5.50. And Cameron Green, Ben Stokes, and Sam Perrin sold a big dollars you know, IPL mini auction. Stairs coding there. Yeah, good news for Cam Green. Yeah, a nice payday going for himself. But yeah, the IPL, when does it start back up coding? I believe that's in about March too, isn't it? Somewhere around there. I'm just going to scroll further down in my order, see what I can find. Uh, I don't think my app actually has the IPL, but it does say that 92 days time, is actually when it's going to be the women's Six Nations starting, and then the men's Six Nations, it starts in, where is it? International Rugby, it's going to be 41 days away for the men's Six Nations. Now, Kerwin Bosch kicks us off for the second half of this matchup. It looks like it's going to be Werner Koch chasing that one hard, not quite able to line it up and nicely taken there, looking for the offload. Straight away, the Lions. Looking a lot more aggressive than we saw in the first half. Juan Horn. Nearly start. Back into the pocket. Going to be a kick downfield from Jordan Hendricks. IPL 2023 start on the 25th of March. He said they have been playing now. they left for India at the beginning of December. Says Bianca. That's something that I wish they'd, like, I guess, update us a little bit more on here in New Zealand. Like, because New Zealand haven't been playing in it or have they is that new zealand versus india but either way we don't really get to hear anything about it here in new zealand which i feel like's slightly annoying because we got to see the likes of the rugby league world cup and then we got to see the wheelchair rugby league world cup as well and it was actually very entertaining and i feel like blind cricket's one of those ones that i, I guess it would be an interesting one to be able to watch for people just to see the skill level that's involved in it Right, time is off at the moment. Looks like the Lions have got a bit of an injury to start the second half with Marty Slow staying down a little bit longer. Not looking too flash at the moment. Lowe kind of looks like Adam Ashley Cooper, if you were to look at him from side on, except probably a bit more of a muscly Adam Ashley Cooper. Quite a solid individual, Marty Slow. Loves a good run at the ball. You know, he just lands on his head. Lovis Kachni helped drive him into the turf, said, how's that Durban turf taste, buddy? You used to play here. Yeah, you've gone away to the Lions, which is kind of the opposite as a lot of players normally go to the Lions or from the Lions to the Sharks. A little bit of a switcheroo, which is something we've actually seen for Carlos Saidi as one example who is playing in this game. Right, Norhamba about to feed the ball in for the Lions. We are set 40 metres out from their line. Uh, do blind rugby also there? I believe they do play a little bit of blind rugby union. That's going to be the penalty. I believe so anyway. Well, I know we've got wheelchair rugby union. We have blind rugby as well, though. Not too sure. Someone's just said to put out the fire. Didn't realise they were firefighting out there on the rugby field. But it's going to be, okay, that just meant pretty much take the three points rather than kick in. 
for the corner. So they will be going for the three from 45 metres out, straight out in front of the post. And I was at Vincent Chichuka from the Lions of the Sharks. Says Andre there. Yeah, he was actually supposed to be starting at full for this game, but instead they went with Gerda and Krobala. So I don't know whether Vincent Chichuka is off the bench now or whether he is actually going to be just not playing at all. I'd assume not playing at all. Normally we don't see a late change of a guy moving from the starting lineup to the bench unless there's an injury and the guy in the starting lineup is no longer there. Kellen Bosch taking a few steps backwards. 43 minutes through this game. Looking to add some more points on the board. They were making an eight-point lead for the Sharks. Now, my end score prediction was Sharks by eight, but we're still quite early on in the contest, so I don't think 15 points to seven would be the end score. Well, of course, first curl and Bosch. Does need to get this one over. Curling nicely straight down the middle, and that will be now 15 points to seven. Question is, the Sharks by the right to Chuka. Ooh. I mean, we're seeing a manual at number six for the Lions throughout this game. Vincent's not there, so maybe in terms of longevity, they might have picked the wrong one. Because they have a bell inside the ball, and uh, their spatial orientation is so good, or spatial uh, orientation is so good, uh, they can find the ball and play. Unfortunately, there's been an incident with uh, where the ref blew a final whistle. See Sebastian there, one of the players kicked his face off. <laughs> is that a true story, Sebastian? <laughs> Surely it's a different whistle, but I do enjoy the picture that it paints in the mind. Emmanuel over Vincent and Emmanuel Vincent are brothers. They certainly are the Chuka brothers. There's a few sets of South African bros playing for different sides. His nose is about as straight as Elton John there. Looked like it was way off to the side. Then the cock. Hasn't really had a huge amount of the ball today. Just having to wait for the opportunities. I believe he's carried once and he's made about two or three tackles. The process as well, that's unfortunate. We don't want too many yawns with it being so early in the morning. Here in New Zealand. Another scrum though. We've seen quite a few of those throughout this matchup between the two sides. Not Humba. About to feed the ball in. Is set. It's done well to stay up. It looks like it's half an inch from going down. And you know, also, I've never even heard of blind rugby, says Sebastian. In there as well. The hooker on his knees. And that hooker was, I believe that would have actually been Kieran van Thedden. Now the Lions, they've got the option of three if they want it. Or they could kick for the corner. They're going to go for the three now. We've actually only seen one attacking chance for the Lions inside of the 22 of the Sharks throughout this game, and that was actually off kickoff, which makes me slightly concerned that they're not going to be able to get that try that they need to get back into the contest, and maybe those three-pointers are the way to go. If you get three of them, they'll take the lead in this match. And now Jordan Hendrickson from 37 metres out. Should be a kickable three here. For the Lions fly half. That will close the gap in the scoring. Back to actually what it was at halftime with that five points difference. And it's time just making sure that this one does drift through the sticks. He is, oh, he's got to come back enough. Gone over. And now that is going to make the score 10 points to 15. Still in favor of the home side here, the Lions, or sorry, the Sharks. Should say, shouldn't get that around the wrong way, should I? One of them can go on water, in water. The other one, I've seen a lion swim though before. They don't enjoy it that much, I don't think. Lion Rugby is sponsored by a World Rugby Refs Association. Says Gareth there. I wonder if 2023 is going to be a better or worse year for refereeing. Surely it can only get better from here, can't it? Then the cock. Nice tackle made inside of the 22. Good drive there. It's almost become a mall now. And the Sharks jumping in there. They have been able to lock that ball in. It looks like maybe a shoulder injury for Lois Kachny. But it's going to mean that they have got themselves a scrum feed on the 22. Is this a younger or older than you, though? 
Cheers, Aiden. Okay, so you said you're going to behave, but you still want to know the details. She is two years older than me, Aiden, if you must know. So she is 25. That's all you're getting. It's like, hello, it's is going to be possibly getting that shoulder put back into the right place. All right, still 33 minutes left in the second half. We've already seen probably about five minutes of stoppages throughout the second seven minutes, though. Well, they're playing a bit of Christmas songage at the ground. I actually put my guitar out in a little shed out there. Oh, it's, it's not quite a shed. It's like a room, but it's a storage room. And it's currently out there, so I won't get to play any Christmas tunes for Christmas, unfortunately, which, of course, the family will be very happy about. Because I only know really happy birthday. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Relax. I'm not asking you any serious questions, says Aiden, in there as well. He kind of looks like someone else as well, to be honest. A few of these South African guys look like other players from other countries, just mixed in with a bit of Afrikaans. They are just showing that rolling mall. Actually, that should have been a penalty to the Lions, looking at that. And unfortunately for Lovis Kachny, because he was lifting the leg in the mall, that's actually what's caused him to fall awkwardly and land on his arm the wrong way. But yeah, aren't supposed to lift a leg in a mall. That is what he did. But they didn't see that. Okay. Sounds like time's about to be back on. Looking relatively dry in Durban. Hey, what, Cape Town wasn't looking dry the other week, though, for the Cape Town Sevens. It was absolutely bucketing down the coverage for the Sevens final cutout here in New Zealand for New Zealand versus Samoa, which was a big shame because we were having fun getting ready to watch that one until it all of a sudden cut out and was delayed by about 20 minutes. And come on, the Sharks, you will make my ex to win this game. Go, 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 Sharks, says Lawrence. Maybe they give you a happy new year if they also get themselves the bonus point in this matchup. As they win this game by about 15 points, I believe they actually overtake the Lions and they bump themselves up about four positions on the table. Now Grant Williams, look to the short side, fires it back across to Vinacock. Now, good shot on him. By, I believe that would have been Willem Alberts. Now Grant Williams goes up to Gerbran Groa. Uh, Groa, by the way, when is the next seven tournament? I believe it's actually the one that's taken place in Hamilton. All oh, the referee getting involved in that one. Zahi complaining, but I think he was more complaining because he didn't even make a good tackle on the ref, let alone the player that he missed. So that's going into touch. About 30 metres out from the line, it is going to be the Sharks now with another line out chance. So at the moment, the line's deep inside of their own. 22 or deep inside of their own half, just trying to get through. And Werner is in Yester. Have I said that correctly? Hopefully, I've said that not too badly. Your blind rugby would be weird. Also, we'd just rub it in uh, on the blind side flanker, wouldn't it? Says Sebastian. True. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say on my app when the next World Sevens League is as well, by the way. Uh, but I believe it is Hamilton. Uh, Hamish, is it just me or is this game be played very quickly? I believe the first game, or the first half went, first 20 minutes fast, 20 minutes second, 20 a little bit slower. This first eight minutes or so of the second half has gone a little bit slower, but I believe once they start getting that running rugby going, the game's just been going like that. And why the red face is Gersten, I believe I might be a little bit burnt. Again, we did go mini golfing yesterday. Thumb was out a little bit, but also just the camera does seem to make me look a little bit more red. Than I actually am. Like if I rotate this, it makes me actually look redder, doesn't it? If I move it like that. And um, blowing a uh, rugby sounds like fun, and it would be a joke. It'd be kind of funny. There's eight in there, but Makazoli up and be great run down the field for the sharks there. The counter-attack seems to be where the sharks may be most dangerous in the second 40. Look on your arm, the nice short ball. The fun Trinsberg. Great counter ruck from Marius Lowe and the work to be able to throw that back to his teammate while he was still in the process of falling. And when is the storm is playing? Because it's a fantastic evening tonight. I hope I are on for that one too, says Lawrence. We certainly are. So they are playing in only one hour's time, 60 minutes. Then the storm is in action up against the Bulls. Uh, sevens to be dying in South Africa. Absolutely no support and promotion uh, of the South African or of the game by South Africa Rugby Union 
You can tell by the attendance at the Cape Town Sevens. And also the fact that they were charging an arm and a leg just to be able to go to that stadium. Also, I think, put people off. You've got to get butts and seats for Sevens because they, they need to think of it more strategic than just an attendance. Because at the end of the day, if someone comes to the Sevens and they're going to sit there watching 10 hours of rugby, the chances of that person not buying a singular drink or a bit of food or something at the ground are extremely slim. So the best way of doing it is make ticket attendance prices cheap, get the people into the stadium, and then after that, you're going to make the money off them buying drinks, snacks, and also just they'll enjoy the environment. As long as you've got a friendly environment, which Sevens always is, once you're at the ground, it's normally a pretty awesome game or a pretty awesome day, to just get them into the stadium. They'll buy some hot chips, which are always overpriced at the grounds anyway, for about seven bucks. You're good to go. That's the extra money that you've tried to charge them for your ticket, already done. And that's only after the morning session. Dan Strait, greatest kill in the game. Dear Skeptic Dan, please give a quick recap. So we saw the Sharks start this match extremely well. Lions haven't really had too many attacking opportunities, but they've still been able to keep this game relatively close for the amount of, I guess, amount of chances they've had. Which side is boarding in this? He's going, oh, I'm always uh, neutral when it comes to the South African sides going head to head. I just love watching them play each other. And we get another game straight after this. Got two more South African sides playing. So that is indeed a very Merry Christmas Eve for us here in New Zealand. And yeah, bro, the prices for rugby matches are absurd these days. But yeah, they don't look at it as like the fact that you're going to get money from them at the game as well definitely for sevens like sevens is the perfect way even if it's like you have someone going around with one of those old school like stand things or like you know the ones that hang off the shoulders like they have at like the american games have someone going around with like some chips even if they're cold chips you know drinks and whatnot and you're gonna make an absolute massive amount of money but they don't look at that side of things they go we need people come to our games but we're going to charge them five times the price we should because we want more money and lions are defending like lions says skeptic i'll say so i feel like that's a good analogy jordan hendrickson had a chance to make this game a bit closer but he has hooked it away to the left hand side just a little bit where is he there today he's currently sleeping at this stage so hopefully i'm not being too loud because him and my mum have to drive for about three hours in only about four hours time they're going to be driving for a few hours to go and pick up my sister from the airport They'll be up there yeah, maybe around 12-ish. Confederate cricket and rugby grounds will be expensive. Certainly is. I love how you stay up so often for these games. I love the commitment, says Kirsten. Yeah, there's always, like, that's the thing. I love getting up for these games because you know they're going to be good ones. Sometimes, like, I don't think there's been many times at all that I've woken up for a random hour of the night game and haven't walked away going, like, I'm glad I've done that. Whether it's like the game's been decent or whether it's just getting to talk to you guys is the best part of it, I think. And it's like all sports stadiums are run by Mr. Krabs. There's Sebastian there and too many matches. Rugby becoming 12 months a year. Worldwide rugby is killing goose. Uh, that lays golden egg. There's Gordon there. And also, are you going to do the BBL tomorrow? I don't believe we are going to be doing the BBL for the Renegades Hobart Hurricanes match just because that's the stage that my sister would have only just got home and she may end up sleeping when she gets here. So I don't really want to accidentally wake her up a few times. And will we see your sister in commentary anytime soon? Probably not. I don't think she's too keen. It's going to be Sia Khaleesi now making his way out onto the field for the Sharks. Gets a big standing ovation almost from the crowd in Durban. I'll be hoping to see a big performance from him here as this game's still only five points difference between them. And don't tell Rajni that he has a sister. No, we don't have to worry about Rajni. He's got, he's got that lady who's Overseas, doesn't he? They'll be all good for a while. And also, we have got Daughter to the Movie soon, busy all day. Says Kirsten, what movie is she going to, Kirsten? Is it one of the new ones that are about? I haven't been to the movie theater in ages. Like, we went mini golfing yesterday, which is something I also hadn't done in a little while. Me, George, and Daniel that spend the day out in Omaru. Didn't get to go bowling. I know that's Shish. Oh, does Shish have the other girl lined up? I see. As he always gives 100%. Says Skeptic. And also, I don't think it's going to happen. If I'm here, says Aiden. 
in there as well. Oh, to be fair, I just don't think she really, like, she doesn't hugely enjoy watching cricket or rugby. Like, if there was hockey on, she might consider doing some, but the next international men's game of hockey is in 65 days, and she's no longer there or here in 65 days. Rajni is roaming around. Avatar, three hours of rugby gone. Tears cursed in there. Avatar, that's a decently long movie, isn't it? How much time is there over? Says Liam. So currently, there is still another one well, more. We'll update the score, but it's 26 minutes left in this game. The rolling more. It's a knock on from the Lions. Another mistake when they needed to be clinical. Thomas the Toy takes it nicely on the halfway line for the Sharks. Now back across to the side. Kevin Bosch goes to look on your arm. Does the little grubber and behind it sits up and nicely taken by Emmanuel Tichuk, who's got Vin the cock all over him. Looked like a little bit of an illegal clean out there from Khaleesi. Or at least came in from a long way back. Unfortunately, Rajni couldn't join us for this game because he's having his day. Hmm. He's had to test the endurance, isn't it? Come on, Sharks, just do it, says Ina. And Rajni is the one who wanted someone, uh, something with your mum and went to the shadow zone. Yeah, because he said that my mum was his mum and then he, he said some weird stuff, didn't he? Oh, Rajni. And I called him a bad word. <laughs> And Raz Kutsia, all slightly partially charged. Sharks now have this one available. Offload, straight to Grant Williams. Got a step on him too. Plenty of toe. Scores the try in the corner and the kick attempt didn't quite work out for the Lions in that case. And Grant Williams has a turn of pace. He certainly does and he's been able to use that to his advantage right there. Get his side over the try line for the third time in this game, which does now mean only one more try needed for that bonus point. And I see Greg Livington. Welcome in, mate. Hope you are doing extremely well. Hope you're excited for Christmas just around the corner. I mean, Christmas Eve here in New Zealand. Hopefully, the I haven't actually checked what the weather report uh, weather report is going to be like. Did you vlog it? I wanted to to an extent, but then also it was a bit tricky because mini golf normally like the chances of us playing mini golf without any children on the course as well and not like accidentally filming them. That was going to be tricky, but we finished playing it. We went to the park afterwards. If we had gone bowling, we were going to do a little bit more of a vlog for it, though. But, yeah, didn't get to vlog it, sadly. But there is a chance that I might be going somewhere with them for New Year's. So that will be a vlog and a half, if we can vlog it. And Flesh and I said, hey, welcome in, mate. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a Merry Christmas almost. I keep on saying, I hope you've... I feel like I'm going to be saying, I hope you've had a Merry Christmas on Boxing Day, even though Christmas is still taking place for a few people at that stage, I think, depending on where they are in the world. And cricket vlog video is still missing. It is. It's taken a long time to edit. I've added quite a few of the subtitles on there. But yeah, it's just been such a busy few days that I underestimated how little time I get to edit. And I think there was a patch there on, what day are we? We're on Saturday currently. Yeah, there was a patch on about Wednesday where all I wanted to do was just get that editing done. And every time I sat down within 10 minutes, either like I'd have to help with something around the house getting ready for Christmas or George would message saying he's on his way around. And like there was just really like no time to try and get it done. But it is still coming. Let's go. It's starting to look a little better. Dear Skeptic, morning, Amish. Good to see you again. Oh, my head too much line read uh, last night. Go the Lions, says Spider Mick. Come on, Sharks, give me a good excuse, says Gareth. And Sharks 20, Lions 10. Any more stream on later, says Greg. We have got the matchup between the Stormers and the Bulls. It has taken place in only about 50 minutes' time. And going to Super Rugby next year. It's a tricky one because, of course, the safe bet's Crusaders. But who knows? Maybe a couple of the other sides will be competitive this year, like the Blues. That's going to be bouncing up again. A rough bit of work from the Lions. Every time the ball comes free, Straight into the hands of the Sharks, and they're on the counter-attack. Back to mine. Big shot on Chamberlain. I think that one's gone out on the full. Yes, it has, and it has to go right back where Chamberlain kicked it from. And also, credit of uh, Chateau for Master Ferguson. Have I said that correctly? Maybe not. I feel like I might have said it slightly wrong. 23rd of December tonight, the night to get rats asked. Ah, is that so that you can have 24th to recover from the hangover and then 25th? It was pretty close to in the field of play for that kick, but must have just, yeah, nah, it did bounce on the line. And yeah, and the cricket, they wanted to see how much you scored, says Nazi Williams. Mm. It's, 
Yeah. It might be a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> the more I watch it, the more I think, what was I doing during that innings? And you'll know what I mean when you see it. I was watching too much Test Match Cricket before, and that's all I'll say. But he manus. Too much of an inspiration for that, that innings. It is Sonny Bill Williams retired from rugby. He has indeed. Uh, he is not retired from boxing as of yet, though, because I have a feeling that Sonny is still playing. Says Greg, I know he's on the commentary team for Stan when it comes to the NRL. In fact, sorry, when it comes to the rugby union. And hi, Amish, says Matthew. Welcome in. Doing well, Matthew. The little mistake there. Unfortunately, there's been quite a few throughout the second half currently. The way it's been sitting. Yeah, I believe the plan at the moment is going to be to have my batting innings as one video and then my umpiring innings as another video. Just so that I don't have to cut it down too much as I know that if you want the GoPro footage, you probably want more than just a little snippet type thing. And also Sharks is going to get that bonus Christmas point or the bonus Christmas point. We need to go, boys, says Lawrence. Yeah, looking at the way that the table's sitting, with how it is currently, the Sharks actually find themselves sitting about here. So with a bonus point, I'll creep up just a little bit further. Edinburgh have got a great points differential compared to the Sharks, which is why they need this bonus point. Be able to take that one out of the equation. That's going to be a knock-on, I believe, this time by the Sharks. I hope all is good in the chat. Uh, and gets loads of great loot from Father Christmas. How do you like this match? It's been a stalemate at times throughout it. And do you captain your cricket side? No way. I'm only like, this is only, I've played two games in the last 10 years. Both been within the last, like, probably month and a bit. So I'm definitely not the captain. I wouldn't, like, if they offer me the captaincy, I'll probably turn it down, to be honest, just because, like, there are other people in the team who definitely deserve it more than me. Yes, I've played in the past, but I'm not playing like a captain at the moment. In terms of that leadership side of things. I'm loud, which I guess is a good thing. Uh, I said in between 15 and 30, says Nazi Williams. I face between that many balls, Nazi. First little spoiler I've given. Don't delete any embarrassing swing and miss footage. Nah, I've left everything in, which is why it's so annoying that I didn't play it a few of the things that I did. And I'm going to eat him over as Glasgow today. And who's your favorite South African player? I'll probably go with Evan Hetzbeth. If I had to pick one, just because he's always a tank, and he? Going to give you 110%, going to smack some people around and very handy in the line out. And, uh, but what happened the other day doesn't count, says Gareth, for just the 23rd. And fleshing too many youngsters around Christmas Eve and day, I got to be low key. 23rd, no holes barred, says Gareth. All right, ball fed in now. This is the replacement number 21 in this one, which is Andre Warner. Wait for this ball to come out. We've already had 21 minutes off the second half. Kicked him behind. Looks like Horn's looking for the 50-22, and he gets it. Great work from Horn. This will be the first chance for the Lions inside of the 22 of this half. Lions all the way. See Spider Mac and Paul Lions are not doing so well. Uh, anyways, I'm going to wish you sports fans and Kiwi lads fans a super rocking Xmas jingle bells. There's a roof there. Right back at your roof. Hopefully you do. Enjoy your Christmas time and also your new year, possibly. Also, thanks, Ruth. Same to you and yours. If you play Amigo, this mission to Gareth. Mm. So, does that mean New Year's Day or like that evening, Gareth? Does that mean you're drinking on like the 28th or the 29th just to get a few extra days in before the big one? And then maybe for the big one, you actually have an early night, perhaps. And that is Kings Park Stadium behind you. Am I right? You certainly are. Which is where this game is being played. Currently 12 points difference. When the sides, the Lions taking that one nicely at the front. That was too many words in a row. Myself? Yeah, nicely taken. Rolling more chance. Wrestled down by the Sharks, but it's illegally that they've wrestled that one down. Penalty goes the way of the Lions, right? This is where they probably need to look to go aggressive here. The Eve of New Year's Eve. Eve? There's skeptic there. Oh, so uh, fully. Well, hopefully not a quack quack, says Nuzzy Williams. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't it wasn't my best innings I've ever had, I'll be honest, but it wasn't like it wasn't absolutely dreadful. It just wasn't that good either. Like you guys are gonna watch the video and by about like halfway through, you'll be like, man, just hit the ball. 
I agree with you, Hamish. Even as a gorgeous player, I, I didn't say gorgeous. I said a good player, but I know a lot of ladies do like him. And it looks like a movie superstar. This roof, and I reckon Hendricks and the Lions, the number 10, is good enough to be in the box or international level in general. I think he's got a decent crack in the future, definitely with that long boot that he offers for them as well. Who's your favourite South African player? Once again, I'd go probably Evan Etzbeth. If I had to pick my favourite South African back, it's probably Lukanyo Arm. That's with the way that he's been able to really put it together for the Springboks over the last few years. The Lions are up to 22 metres out. Ron Smith trying to break through, uh, through out at Umperform so far. Slightly quieter than we would have been anticipating. Has been a little bit rough with when to pass the ball, but he's also had some decent runs. So I think it's just about, I guess, slowly getting back into the swing of things as well. For Lokanyo Arm, which I think he will be able to. They don't want to risk him too heavy too early, I guess, as well. That's going to be another mistake from the Lions. The Sharks' defense has just not been breaking. Nice run forward from Jan Stefans Rensburg. Advantage over for the knock on. And thanks, off I go. There's Kirsten still hits if you're sure. And I love you come, Andre Pollard. There's Matthew. And I'll be sipping my gin and orange. Much of my crackers and smoked damn cream cheese. Nice run from Colisi here. Inside ball. Then Tupperwai goes to Jaden Hendrickson. Offload with the no look. Tupperwai taken down 10 meters out. Oh, he tried to find the pass to burn the cock and it blew it. That's going to be another knock-on advantage in this game. I love Andre Pollard. There's Matthew there. Well, Lions just looking to get out of their own 22. Khaleesi, what a run. How much time is still left currently on the clock? We have got another 16 minutes left in this matchup. So still time for it to go either way, but the next team to score does need to be the Lions, if that's a possibility. There's two... Oh, okay, some bad language being thrown around out there on the field. The referee's telling them off, and don't say that. Next game, ladies and gentlemen, it will be the matchup between the Stormers and the Bulls. That are starting in only about 40 minutes time, I believe, that live stream, and we will be covering it on the channel as well. So if you are new, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It's hugely appreciated, guys, all being here for this Christmas Eve live stream here in New Zealand. I haven't got my Santa hat on, but... Certainly will be wearing it on the 25th. The crowd, they were all hoping that that was going to be a try for the Sharks, but it was brilliantly defended in the end by the Lions just to do enough to stop that final pass. Top of why, I think it was the wrong time to try and go for the offload when he was on his back, looked for Vern the cock, just didn't quite get it away. I think the Rivers doing himself proud. Just get, oh, I think she's had a pretty good game. Are on the exact same to you and your family of a super festive season. Sharks are on the winning side today, says Roof. And I hope the Sharks win this one. I got some money on this game, says Jonathan. So when you say some money, Jonathan, large amount or just a little bit for this matchup? Because I feel like depending on whether it's a large amount or a little bit will depend on how much you sweat throughout this last 10 or 15 minutes if the Lions score the next try. How well do you think? Well, who do you think is going to win the Stormers and the Blue Bulls? I think Stormers, they've got a good side. They're missing a few of their key players, though, so I'd actually go probably the Bulls for this upcoming match. Stormers, says Gareth. And Gareth, yes, it's a healthy alcoholic drink. That was your favourite uh, in the in the Shock Steen team, sorry? The Shock Steen team. What is the Shock Steen team, Matthew? Do let me know. Large, says John. Like, okay, so you're probably going to be sweating profusely if there's a try for the Lions in the near future. You'll feel like you've gone for like a marathon run in a quick little moment. A Christmas bonus, please, Sharks. There's Ina there. Yeah, one more try would get them the winning bonus point for the four tries or more. That's going to be another line-out throw for the Sharks. And I think throughout this whole matchup, from start to finish, it's pretty much been just, I guess the best way to describe it is Lions clear the ball, Sharks attack, Lions get the turnover, Lions clear the ball, Shark attack. Hey, that's Damien D. Lindy. Is that Lionel Cronje? I swear that was Damien D. Lindy. 
No, I might not have been. I might have been seeing things. Probably Evan Matthew. Yeah, I'll go Evan Etzebeth from the Sharks team if I had to pick one, Matthew. The decent guy and bear the nectar of the gods, says Skeptic. Another handling error, but it's gone backwards. Makazoli Mapimpi trying to step his way through. Good tackle made on him. It was the number 13. Let's start this game for Ionka. Another big carry for the Steimeters. I believe that was Blula. Hendrickso rolls it back, looking for the box kick now. There's another advantage against the Lions. Very stop-start fixture. Going to be a knock-on. Going back for the initial penalty. Who's your favorite player in the Jack's team? It's probably still, it's probably still Eben. I thought about changing it just before, but I, I'd say Eben's still just, just a little bit ahead. Let's get Dick. I love it. Lager is super healthy. Lots of yeast, B12, and hops. Says Roof. And any side will be in an advantage with Big Eben in it. Andre Pollard, not bad kicker. And how's Bosch being? Actually quite quiet overall, Curl and Bosch. I think they've messed up quite a few of the passes to him. That was probably a perfect example of that, how they tried to go with a slight skip pass and didn't actually get it into his hands. But he still hasn't been too bad overall, Curl and Bosch, for this game. And looks like actually now he's going to be taking a field. That is for Lionel Cronje. Is it just me or does Cronje look very similar to Damien Dialendi? I'm just going to look at him again. Where's he gone? Where's Lionel? So I can the shark where he's taking another three quarter. Maybe you sport. Well, mostly sport in this league. Oh no, that is Lionel Cronje. It doesn't quite look like Dialende from the single now. So most out of all the sides in this league is a tricky one because to be honest, I would probably say the Stormers, but then a lot of people would go, that's only because they won last year. But even at the start of last year, I think the Stormers were the side that I kind of found suited my watching style the best, if that makes sense, but only by like a small margin above the other side. I still absolutely love watching all of them play. That's why I have 12 points on the trot roof. I give my belt RB12 the respect it deserves. And my all-time favorite South Africa rugby player has to be the absolutely famous Scott Berger. Says Roof. Nice. I like the Stormers. Says Matthew there. Do you like Evan Etzebeth though, Matthew? That's my big question for you. Now, Jordan Hendrickson putting up this drop kick from the halfway line. He did manage to get that three points over Coronia. So now 25 points to 10 currently. Pepsi put the lazy. First time we've seen him with the ball in a good little while. So a lot of players have gone missing in the second half for both teams. Jan and Hendricks are rolling it back. Puts it high now. It's like an awkward swirling one, not quite taken cleanly by either side, but it bounces back for Juan Horn. The Sharks still yet to get themselves that tacking bonus point, getting the four tries or more. See a Kalesi, bit of a counter ruck there. Doesn't get through though. Sebastian, you're on fire. Uh, there it is Lager Pilsner or Pilsner or oh, just light beer, says Ruth. Now Hendrickson goes across. This is a lot of space for Chamberlain. He's got Hendrickson on his inside. Cuts now to the outside. Doesn't really have that passing option in the end. Now looking for the ball. He's done well. Another advantage going the way of the Sharks. Hendrickson around the side. Is it off the Cronier? One more Colisi. Bit of a juggle there. In fact, it was Pipsy Butta Lazy. Now. Looking out on the wing, it's going to be slapped down. It's gone back with the set, though. I can't watch the game house. I'm going, thanks, says Stephen Marks. He's had a bit more of a quieter game than I guess we normally see from him in the spring box kit, which is understandable with him recently returning. I think he's only had about three carries. He had a nice pass earlier on, uh, but then also had the other one where he waited a bit too long. And he's also one of those players in defense that I guess you don't normally see him too much because he just Pretty much does what he has to do. He makes the tackle and then gets out of there. So I'd say he's had about a 6 out of 10 performance somewhere around there. At least having a quiet match. That's what with the ball handling passing. Says Ruth, yeah, there's been a lot of drop balls throughout this match. Surely with a name like Hamish, your favourite UIC side has to be Scottish. I like watching Edinburgh. They're not a bad side. They're probably my pick of the Scottish sides if I had to pick one. Yeah, very Scottish sounding name, isn't it? He's, I do like him and he is huge. And eight lagers and four stouts, madam. And it is 25 points at 10 now, it certainly is. 
there any USD teams that have a yellow kit? Says Gareth. Not to the extent that I want them to. The Stormers have a little bit of yellow on these. Maybe that's why I like them a little bit more in terms of South African sides. Maybe it's just that yellow. Who else says yellow? Munster's got a little tiny bit of yellow trim, I think. What kind of beer them African nations drink, Hamish? I would not be able to tell you. Oh. And um, as a 5 out of 10 game without touching the ball, his leadership in the back line is immense. It certainly is. Just adds so much experience. Uh, I just wanted to ask, what is the most runs ever scored? Says Matthew, I believe in a test match-wise, it was around that 900 mark in an innings for a whole side, unless you're talking about how many runs I've scored, which is a lot less than 900. Castle Lager, by the sounds of it, that's going to be over the line. The Sharks get the bonus point. And that is going to be very nicely done. I believe it was Kenan Thunferden. At the back of that Roland Moore, Nanza Pilsner, and when Hook uh, Lager, which I think I said wrong, Scottish name, Scottish surname. Yes, yeah, somewhere along the Ling Hamish. Says, yeah. And also in Black Label. Okay, I've only actually heard of Castle Lager out of those ones. And also Tafel, not many, just enough to make a brandy. Hope tastes better. Yes, how much of uh, the score by yourself? My high score, I believe, was 43 not out from batting. Uh, but that was 10 years plus ago. Oh, yeah, somewhere around the 10-year mark. And then ever since then, I've only actually played two matches of cricket. But I'm actually, like, I'm a member of the side now. I've got a polo and everything, a shirt. And that says I'm a player, so, well, a cricket player, I should say. Not so much the other type of player. Oh, time off here. Sounds like they might want to check this one. Well done, says Matthew. Thank you, mate. Okay, they want to check the transfer at the mall. So another seven and a half minutes left. This game has had quite a few stoppages in the second half, unfortunately. They stopped it from being a completely smooth run and one. Okay, transfer in the mall. They're not sure if it's all right, so they're going to be checking it. And it is a Christmas bones. Uh, yes, 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 or a Christmas bonus. And then 32 points to 10 now. Unless the transfer is not a legal one. Quite a few microbreweries operating around the bigger cities. And what about Amstel Lager and uh, Holston Pilsner? Very lively, bubbly. See the roof. All right. They're checking this one. Oh, Thomas the Toy. Is in front. Transfer is on the second line. I've said there. Okay. Clearly on the second line. Do you like pizza? I do. I don't mind a pizza, but it depends on the toppings a little bit. You need some good toppings on your pizza rather than. Like, you know, when sometimes you get a pizza and you're like, those toppings just weren't quite up to par. Like, I actually probably prefer it just a plain cheese pizza from like pizza or anything because at least you know what you're getting. You're getting cheese, you know. But like, I don't mind some chicken on there. Okay. This is going to be a no try now, ladies and gentlemen. So the Sharks, they will not get themselves their bonus point as of yet. You're going to have to take it off them. Do you like breathing? <laughs> yes, all right. Overrated at times. So I'm eating some right now. Ah, okay. What type of pizza you got, Matthew? How's the kicking for the goals been this game? Average, you must try salami, green peppers, and mushrooms with feta cheese. Fun fact, I have hardly actually had any of those four items in my life. but. Goal kicking, we've seen a couple miss ones for the Lions. I think the Sharks have only missed the one. In fact, it might actually be one miss for both sides. Oh, there's a mouth wide open in the crowd. She could not quite believe it. Don't go crazy with your pizza toppings. It was simple as the best, says Sebastian. Mm. And I won't mention whether or not I have pineapple on my pizza or not, because I know that that kind of splits the world into two. Estrella is good. Says Fleshen. 
I mean, I know I'm not on any alcohol for the Christmas day, but I'm going to be having a nice little mango sparkling Bundaberg drink. Those are very good, although I learned they've got 44 grams of sugar in them for about 375 mils. So quite, oh, wow. He's just ended up diving straight out over the top of him there. Christian Pina. I think Pepsi Butter Lazies. I mean, he might have taken a little bit of contact to the back of the head. He ended up flying over the top of him, though. This game's become a little bit scrappy. He just ended up falling down, so there was no real way that Pinar could actually make the tackle on him without missing. He just ended up sliding underneath. Now the Lions will be sitting there 45 metres out from the line now, back across to the right. They can get themselves a try here. They might be able to get the losing bonus point, but it's another advantage in favour of the Sharks. Off the head, no knock-ons, actually, the call in the end, so it is going to be play on now for the Lions. Straight in there, Notch, you almost get him the turnover. It seems like they're right on the verge of getting it again. We have a nice mango-flavoured drink called Brutal Fruit. Says uh, Duran. hopefully I said your name correctly. Okay. Might have to give it a go at some stage. Right, Marius Lowe takes the quick tap. Lions playing with 14. Draw and pass. Sia Kulisi will score the try. They might check that last transfer to see if it was flat or forward, but I believe it's fine, and that will now be the bonus point for the Sharks. And 44 grams, that's ridiculous, says Skeptic. Yeah, I think that's why it tastes so good, to be honest, because it's got that much sugar in it that there's no reason for it not to taste nice. And also, we have got there... Yeah, Pizza toppings are meant to be exciting and mysterious. And peanut butter and tuna with extra garlic, says Roof. Is that a try for the Lions? It is a try for the Sharks if it is one. The only point of brutal, few, uh, brutal fruit is uh, to torpedo it. Right. I think that's going to be a good try. Even if you take a conversion, we can still check for foul play. She was very happy live, she said, but it looks like they are once again going to be checking something upstairs. Well, thank you, young man. Says Lishan. I'm eating it right now when I just finished. Says Matthew. Right, it looks like Hendrix has already kicked. Okay, so totally looks like maybe a knee injury here. No flitting in the chat, lads. <laughs> And wait, what? Peanut butter and tuna? Just get back and well. I have to leave the game right now so I can make love to my tonic. And Jin Kakete, Merry, uh, guys, Merry Christmas to you all. Exactly right. Right, I mean, enjoy the drinking and Merry Christmas to you too. Hopefully you do enjoy it. Okay. I think we're taking this one off. Bakery, most you out. Anyone want a pie cream donut or anything? I mean, if you're offering Nazi Williams, I, I wouldn't say no to a nice steak pie from a bakery. Would go all right, I think. Sorry, wait. Tuna, peanut butter, and garlic. I see it. Tuna with a garlic and peanut sauce. Says Gareth. Oh, so you're thinking along the satay chicken type route, Gareth, just with tuna, maybe. Maybe? That makes sense, I guess. Let's go, Shark. Says that young man who was hoping it was going to be the try, and it was. Lions now making their way up to the halfway line, but it is 30 points to 10. It was a missed conversion attempt from Kronje. But, okay, so totally coming back off the field. That is for J.P. Smith. He's had to make his way back out onto the field. Yeah, so it's going to be J.P. Smith and Ruan Smith, both actually on the field now for the Lions. And there's nothing brutal about that fruit. Very mild. I prefer a hot like my curry. You got the balls, peanut butter, and tuna. I would lose five kg, uh, kgs out of one of those because I would vomit so uh, so much. <laughs> nice. Now, going to be Tachuka. Goes back across through the hands of Marius Lowe. There was a knock on. They've actually seen a vantage over by the sounds of it. The Pimpy kicks it forward. Scores the try for the Sharks. There was a very short knock on advantage there from the ref, but it's another try for the Sharks. And now it's sitting 35 points to 10. Can we address this peanut butter and tuna thing? And there's a lot of people saying, I can't go. I can go there. There's Matthew. Where can't you go, Matthew? To the pizza shop? And the Sharks are going to kill it. Oh, going for the kill now. Finish off 
those Atlas Lions. And lots of people saying, I can't go to, oh, to King, uh, King's Batch, but I want to go, says Matthew. I'm sure if they're saying you can't go, there's probably a decent-ish reason overall. But I'm sure there'll be other trips in the future, Matthew. You will be able to go on instead. Great work from Makazoli Mapimpi. That is his second try of this URC fixture now with four minutes left on the clock. The Sharks now find themselves leading by 25. So that will, with this win, actually promote them right up into fifth place. They will overtake the Lions. They'll be sitting on the same points, but they will have a better points differential than the Emirates Lions here, which does mean that now we see a promotion of Whole five rankings, that's a huge win for the Sharks, really. To go from here to here in just the one fixture. But then, of course, they did have the one less game than anyone else, so it was going to be expected that they would get promoted quite a bit. The next game is the Bulls versus the Stormers. Someone's going to get promoted just a little bit further up from their next matchup. The Stormers, theoretically, with the game in hand, would be the side out of those two who would want the win just that little bit more. And also a type of tuna. Says Gareth there, uh, it's good detoxing diet, very tasty satay tuna. Yes, says Ruth. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe to this channel. This bloke, uh, bloke is brilliant, says Sebastian with the 10 out 10. So, yeah, anyone who is new, surely like and subscribe. It's hugely appreciated. We only doing the next game on the channel as well. It's a yellow card to Jaden Hendricks there. Not so ideal. Smack the ball out of his hands. Does anyone know if the Edamara game is on TV tonight? I know it's not here in New Zealand, sadly. Uh, I know that we've got just the two South African fixtures. And then I think we get Munster versus Leinster tomorrow. And then also, I think we've got another one that's going to be taking place. And a game in hand. Says Skeptic there. But yeah, I was about to go for it. Yeah, he's just kicked it. And like they've just said, maybe the ball wasn't in the hands of the Lions player. Okay, seven for the Sharks or seven for the Lions. Seven white. That is actually going to be a man whose name we haven't said too much, Landsberg, going off the field now for the HIA. And also, it's going to be that tuna and tin from Thailand to throw peanuts with garlic oil on, says Ruth. All right, time back on. Yacho Vishachi. About to throw this one in. Gone to the back. Nicely taken by Emmanuel Tuchuka. Decides to hang on to it. Now fires it out the back. Jaden Hendricks. Or Jordan, sorry. Big shot on him. I think it was the replacement. Gianni Lombard. Lions. They've only crossed the try line once throughout this game with a man advantage. Surely this is their chance. Little bit of a juggle there by Ruan Smith. Now gets the offload away. 22 metres out from the line here. Sharks trying to drive him towards the touchline. Two minutes left. Now the big run this time. It's J.P. Smith. Runs onto that one. Vasaki falling into his tackle. He's tackled by his opposite number, Kenan Van Feren. Now almost an interception for Makazoli Mapimpi. I believe that's going to be the advantage. Now it's gone in behind. They set advantage over. Yes, they have. There will be now the goal line dropout. I'll take your word for it. I do not feel the need to test the theory, says Skeptic. For the peanut butter tuna pizza. Yeah, Edinburgh Glasgow is not being shown here in New Zealand, nor is Connacht Ulster, sadly. The next game that we get is actually on the 27th of December, and that is Munster versus Leicester. Which I'm not sure if we are covering on the channel yet. It will probably depend on the test match, how those ones are going. Overall, but who knows? Maybe we will be able to... Well, it's a very early start. 8.30 doesn't sound early, but it will be early if we are doing streaming till about 1 a.m. the next morning. Now, it's going to be a kick tie from Lionel Kronje. Just outside of the 22, nicely taken by the Lions. Yuvran Hrubla, able to make the tackle there. Now, Manuel Tuchuka, another run. Lions now with 40 seconds left on the clock. Looking to close out this game with a win. Well, not a win, sorry, but with a try. And that type of pass will not get them there. Juan Horn now backing himself to go around the outside. Taken down by Werner Koch, who's in their breakdown. They've said that it's legal. Always trying to get in the contest, Werner Koch, when it comes to the breakdown. You see, it's a very long competition. It is definitely with the Champions Cup scattered throughout it as well. 
does just extend it a bit further through. And yeah, the fact that the sides have actually only played about nine games or so at this point is quite surprising with how long the has been going for. I think your boys have got more than a rough, ugly win here today. Second half, Sears flesh in. Now offload it again. That's going to be, oh, would have been deliberately knocked down by Ben Tupperwai, but Tupperwai hasn't heard the whistle. He's going to score it between the sticks. Sadly for him, they're going to have to go right back. Here we lads. They've been so fantastic and still rock every time they commentate on those matches or on these matches. I'm going to celebrate with champagne. The cheap South American version, sparkling wine. Cheers, folks. Cheers, Russo. Yeah, hopefully you do enjoy your sparkling champagne. Yeah. Been a good year overall. I think we've done over, I want to say over 200, maybe more than that, live streams of matches. If you count the sevens, that ramps it up to probably almost three or 400 just with the amount of games that take place for those ones. But we've had a busy year of streaming. Overall, but it's been good fun. Had a few videos thrown in there. And I think 2023, we've got a lot more coming. There's a few videos that have been in the works for a long time that now are just starting to look like they're going to be able to happen. So that is good news. That's not good news for him, though. Like a, uh, Actually, another injury for the Lions here. Cheers, Ruth. There's a question to anyone who encounters me only from here on out. I'm sorry, says Gareth. I enjoy uh, your JC on the rocks uh, here online. Says Gareth as well. So how many beverages have you consumed at this point, Gareth? I would assume you're getting close to the probably 5 to 10, I would guess. Somewhere around there, but it looks like. An injury for one of the Lions players. Sadly, they're number five. Gone off the field now. That man is way too big for that cart. Lions captain. Now 30 seconds past 80 here. And that's a good win for the Sharkies. I thought the match would be close. It's been a long year for these sportsmen, says Roof. And we'll get to, to bollock the balls together, Gareth, says Sebastian. Playing the player without the ball. Looks like once again the Lions, they are going to be going for the corner. Looking for one last crack in this contest. Going to be about 10 metres out from the line, somewhere around there. Sharks currently down to 14 players. Well, Jordan Hendricks has had a pretty good game considering. Yeah, he's been solid. Overall, like we've seen not a huge amount of his running game, but I guess that's always the case, definitely with a side that have had to kick so often. That, oh, yeah, I'll be nicely ordered up for the Bulls. There's Gareth, and yeah, that game is going to be kicking off in only 15 minutes on. Now the Sharks, another chance. I believe it was a knock on, though, so that will now be the end of the game. 37 points to 10. And the Sharks, with a bonus point victory, pushes them up to fifth on the URC table from 10th to 5th. Quite an impressive jump for them. Uh, they'll go into Christmas, a very happy side, getting themselves the 37 points to 10 victory. We do thank you all very much for tuning into the slice stream. If you are new, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We are going to be back in only, like I mentioned, 10 minutes or so time with the next matchup that's taking place, which is Stormers versus Bulls, the second South African game that has taken place on Christmas Eve. 10 minute break, just enough for a snack. That is true. We will grab ourselves some breakfast. And then we will be ready to go for the next contest. And also get ourselves a drink. So anyone who hasn't already, when you've got this little break, be sure to get a drink into you of some sort, whether that's water or something stronger. And we will see you all in 10 minutes' time. Who do you think can win the Bulls? Or uh, what do you think? Can the Bulls beat the Stormers? They've got a good chance, I think, in this game. I think probably a relatively high chance, but it's hard to tell. Thanks for mentioning you're very entertaining just because it's Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible. Can you play guitar like Hamish? Says Ruth. And Neil Pell made his presence felt. I like it. Says Skeptic. Yeah, we did see some good attack and play from the Sharks, but their defense was immaculate for a majority of this game. Just no chance of the Lions being able to break through. And JC LaRue rocks. Says Ruth. And there as well. But nonetheless... Do so thank you all very much for tuning in. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. And we will see you all in 10 minutes' time for the next game, which is going to be the Bulls taking on the Stormers. We'll see you all for the next one.